Minecon 2011 was a convention for Minecraft to mark the full release of the game. Held in Las Vegas, 5,000 people attended a convention for a game that had yet to fully come out. This event not only marked the official start of a game that would surpass all others, but it would be a significant milestone for the Minecraft community, bringing together fans, content creators, and developers to celebrate the game's success and share their enthusiasm for the one-of-one -one game that is Minecraft. But how did not sell over 4 million copies of a game that had yet to fully release? Being the first game to grasp this level of success, and still one of only a few games to reach these numbers during their beta phases. Well, to answer that question, we have to go back to one of the most important days of his life, May 13th, 2009. On this day, Tom Hanks' Angels and Demons were released to the world. North Korea would conduct its second underground nuclear test, and Lady Gaga's hit single, Poker Face, would continue to dominate the music charts. But for Marcus, it would be the day he would release the first ever footage of Minecraft called the Cave Game Tech Test. This showcases a very early prototype concept of the mega game, only taking about six days to make as he had worked on Ruby Dunge, a game that was and would be redesigned to this version of the game. The game saw instant positive feedback on different forums on the internet, and the next day was announced as Minecraft Order of the Stone, making a reference to the Order of the Stick, a webcomic that Notch enjoyed. A month later, this would be shortened to just Minecraft because it was simpler and to prevent people from confusing it with the webcom. On May 16th, three days later, he would tell people to talk to him if they wanted to test an early private single player alpha that over 400 people would play. The next day, he would give a link for the public to try out Minecraft. He would release this video of the game, showing massive improvements on the game, and on the same day would post this picture on his blog stating, yeah, that's the logo amazing stuff. Not too far off the logo we have today. The game would get a mention from IndieGames.com, a popular website amongst the indie game community. This would mark the beginning of the classic phase of Minecraft. During this phase, the game would be worked on adding things such as sand, water, and lava. Fast forward a little bit to June, which would be a very important month as Notch would announce that he got a new job, causing less time for him to develop the game. He would also announce that C418 would be doing the music for the game with this video of sounds being manually added to the gameplay. Multiplayer would release, but most importantly would make the game for sale, making players pre-order it if they wanted to test it further. 12 days after the pre-orders began, Nash posted this to his blog saying that he had had 587 purchases of the game. This shows how popular the game was even after the short period it had been out. He said, I thought, if I don't charge, I'll never get paid. Less than a month after this, the game had over a thousand copies sold and 20,000 registered players, and so he worked at his day job only twice a week and put more time into developing the game. He was already making more money from Minecraft than his job, but he was scared that the game would just die one day, so he didn't want to just quit his job and didn't make this decision until nine months later. But before that, on September 1st, 2009, the introduction of survival mode would turn Minecraft from a neat toy into a proper game. By December 11th, regular updates would happen on Fridays, ensuring players new content and features to look forward to. Then on December 23rd, Nash would release InDev, which from lots of feedback wanting to play the newest version, allowed players to test out the latest versions, even if it was horribly buggy. Some highlights from this phase were the addition of difficulty, level types, and more realistic lighting schemes. Following this on February 27, 2010, InfiDev would be released which would introduce infinite map generation, one of the biggest staples of Minecraft. In late May, Notch quit his job to focus 100% of his time to Minecraft which would serve him justice, because June 2010 would mark one of the biggest months in Minecraft history which started the alpha phase of the game. A year had passed since the initial test of the game and 20,000 paid accounts had been registered. During this month, major updates of the game were added, including minecarts, rails, dungeons, spawners, and saddles. This month also started the Secret Friday updates, which would last all the way until September 10th. On July 3rd, 400 people would buy Minecraft in just 24 hours, marking a huge milestone for the game. He would also release some unofficial merch of a creeper face on a shirt. Then on July 29th, a thousand sales would concur giving credit to the Team Fortress blog and PC Gamer. 
Then in August, Notch would decide to host Minecraft Con 2010 spontaneously in Bellevue, Washington, where more than 30 people attended in only six days' notice. With all the major updates continuously coming out, the sales also boomed, which led Notch to expand the number of people working on the game, morphing Mojang specifications into Mojang AB alongside Carl Manu and Jacob Porser. Jin's Jeb Bergenstein would join shortly after as a programmer who still works for Minecraft today. In October, papers would be signed for the Mojang AB office, and the Halloween update would drop introducing the nether, biomes, and fishing. Notch's team of him, Carl, Jacob, Daniel, and Jins would settle into their new office and wanted to end the year off strong. During December, Deadmew would have Minecraft Pig on his set during his performance at the Blender Theater in New York. Notch would then give him his own custom skin, different to any other. The game's final phase would release on December 20th, 2010 with the beta. Then on December 31st, PC Gamer gave Minecraft Game of the Year despite being so new which marked a huge accomplishment for the game. Notch also announced that Minecraft was close to a million copies sold and for a game that barely hit beta is insane. 2011 would be the year that Minecraft would fully release. It would also be the year that Notch's hard work would bring him to a point of no return and give him a level of wealth most people don't reach in a lifetime, so how did Notch lead the game till November? The year started off hot. January 12th marked the 1 million Minecraft accounts registered, and once again they had to upgrade their server because the game was more popular than the old server. February was relatively slow, but Nash would announce a documentary made by Two Player Productions of the story of Minecraft, which would release on December 22nd, 2012. March would be very eventful, starting with an announcement for a new game developed by Jacob called Scrolls. This game lasted until 2015, but ultimately wouldn't make the cut for development cost. Hey, just another Mojang throwaway. Classic. Anyways, Minecraft would win five awards, listed as Audience Award, the Grand Prize, Best Debut, Downloadable, and Innovation, despite still not being fully out. Well, we're actually gonna finish Minecraft at some point, I think. We also see the first introduction of wolves into the game, which just recently got the first update since they came out. And on March 28th, Notch would mention news of a mobile version of the game, a merch deal with Jinx, and that the Mojang documentary would hit their goal on Kickstarter, being the third highest funded project on the site. April of 2011 would be the first time we would see an April Fools update being pretty small, but it's a tradition Minecraft players look forward to every year. On April 7th, Notch would announce the date 11-11-11 as the targeted date for the full release of the game, saying that the game won't change that much and that it's more of a progress up until that point. He wanted this day partially because Skyrim would release then and he wanted a nice reward for managing to get it done. Then at the end of April, the game would pass 2 million sales. May would be the month that Notch announced Minecraft Con 2011 hosted in Las Vegas with the date 11-11-11 still. He says that capturing the full release live on stage with fans from around the world would be a great opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. June would be another big month with a whole lot of announcements coming out. E3 2011 would take place from June 7th to June 9th where Mojang announced the adventure update, introducing new biomes, mods such as wolves and ocelots, revamp combat, and new gameplay elements like the villager and strongholds. They would also first show Pocket Edition gameplay being majorly behind their features from the main game, but they would also announce that Minecraft would be coming to the Xbox 360 in winter of that year. This was pretty big because not too many indie games make it all the way to consoles. June we would see the addition of Pistons, which may seem weird to mention, but this was actually made because of a modder named Hippoplatinus who made the Piston mod which Mojang liked and decided to add. In July, Minecraft would pass 10 million users. July 5th, the adventure update was said to be coming soon, and now that they got the game's engine to a place they wanted it, they were more focusing on more gameplay updates. Also, they added Minecraft shirts to a game called BF Heroes, which I thought were pretty funny looking. In August, Bethesda, the company being responsible for Fallout, Starfield, and Skyrim, sent a letter stating that they were going to sue Mojang for their second game called Scrolls because it conflicted with their trademark, The Elder Scrolls. 
This would go to court later that year, but nothing was really done about it. On August 12th, Micron would be officially announced for November 18th to the 19th in Las Vegas being $99 a ticket. They would also put in the infamous Steve head for sale on their website. Notch also did a wedding weekend because he was getting married, meaning if you bought a copy of the game, that weekend you would get a code to give to someone. Also something pretty interesting was Notch talking about why the game isn't on Steam, which is still a thing to this day. Other than some small issues, Notch talks about how Valve wouldn't be happy with the way they want to add extra features like selling capes. So by adding it to Steam, the community would be divided where only some players could access the weird extra content. He sums it up with, there's a certain inherent incompatibility between what we want to do and what they want to do, which makes sense even to this day. Getting to September, two months before the official release date. This would be the month the lawsuit would be filed, but Mojang got to keep the right to the name Scrolls under the condition that it would be not used for a sequel or similar standalone game. The adventure update would release adding Endermen, Hunger, Creative Mode, Villages, Strongholds, Cave Spiders, Swamps, and a bunch more. Notch would end the month giving out his plan to stop development on October 18th and then resume after the release. This was to fix all the bugs and optimize the performance to ensure the release would go smoothly. That leaves us with October of 2011, the final month before the game would officially release. October 11th, Notch would announce the adding of a dragon, something that almost 13 years later would still stand as a staple of the game. Mojang hits one year since first started and Notch makes a post reflecting upon the year. This list is no short of amazing, selling close to 3.5 million copies, tons of awards, expanding the game to two more platforms, planning out an entire convention, and starting a company that at the time had 12 people working and three more to come, all while not being a fully released game. Nothing else too important happened, but at the end of the month would announce that Minecon was sold out. November serves as history as Notch prepares for the biggest month of his life thus far. He talks about the feeling of how the game has already proved itself, having lots of players, lots of nice feedback, and several awards. But taking the game out of beta meant making the press review it, which made Notch nervous. Although the score means nothing, the score can make him disappointed, and the score is also how others will compare it to other games. He also has a whole sold out convention to host in less than two weeks, and as the creator of the game means a lot. Notch goes into full detail about the convention, but something funny came up in the middle. Minecraft iOS got released early on accident and was the second most grossed app and then was the most. Anyways, he streamed himself on Twitch for about 45 minutes and then did his press event. The setup was complete and all that there was left was the convention. The convention had 5,000 people, held discussion panels, and invited people to play the game with others. Things like speeches from members of the community, building contests, costume contests, and exhibits also were included. The Nether Party was a 21 and over event that was DJed by Deadmau. But most importantly, Notch pulls the lever that officially releases Minecraft to the public. Finally, after two years, the game was fully released. Only a couple of weeks later, Notch would pass over main lead to Jeb, as he was tired of being the main lead for the game. Jeb to this day is still the main lead, so this was a good decision overall by Notch, as Jeb has brought this game to unreal success. But anyways, that is the history of how Minecraft sold 4 million copies before releasing. I'd like to end this history with some final thoughts on how I think this was all possible. First off, Minecraft is one of the most innovative games of all time. The game is free and so different from every other game, and especially for the time period it was made. Notch knew that the game type had some fans as he was one of them. Without Infiniminer, Notch probably would have just scrapped Ruby Dunch and never thought twice about it. Notch also was really communicative with the community even after it got pretty large, which is what kills most games. If games don't see continuous updates or at least fixes, people get irritated and eventually just stop playing. Nash was very passionate about the game and his undying love for game development is clearly shown when talking about the early years of the game. I also think that Notch made this in a very good point in time which is just all randomness. But having a more condensed area to find any games helped a lot of people find the game as well it was pretty hard to find new games on your own. And easily one of the biggest contributing factors to the game was people uploading and making videos with the game. 
to this day, Minecraft is one of the most populated types of videos on YouTube, which is the biggest platform for video creation. I mean, you're watching a video in 2024 about Minecraft's history that was almost 13 years ago. These people making videos and showcasing the game helped significantly to the success of awareness of the game. The main issue with any good product in the world is exposure. You could have the best thing, but if nobody knows about it, it just doesn't matter. Notch had a game that had promise, and through videos and posts and just word of mouth, got the exposure he needed to really show what the game's true potential could be. The game now sits at the best game ever statistically, and is still one of the most cared about games. From Ruby Dunge to playing Infiniminer, which led to the cave game Tech Test, to Minecraft Order of the Stone, to just Minecraft. So many things had to go right, but in the end it all worked. To think if something went wrong just one time, you might not even have cared about knowing how this game turned out. Maybe 13 years from now, this video will be looked at as a history of something. Who knows?